Greetings, what is going on? AIS 335, welcome. American Indian philosophy, welcome, welcome class. Excited to have each and every one of you here. I'm already loving the group me, the responses so far from what I'm getting for everyone. But I just wanted to say welcome here, Samantha, Jesus, Mary, Lucas, Nicole, Giselle, Veronica, Jessica, Zitlali, Michelle, Mingilla, Lita, Jessica, Reagan, Anna, Stephen, Tatum, Kieran, Ruby, Cassandra, Julian, Angelica, Demetrius, Maisie, Jane, Adrian, Olivia, Savannah, Abigail, Vivian, and Natalie. Looking forward to learning from each and every one of you. My name is Dr. Thomas James Reed. You can call me TJ. I also go by Laguadio, which means he is a good man in Oneida. And allow me to introduce myself in my family's Oneida language as well, which I would say, Sagoli, Nariolewus, Skanagoga, Skanago, Wugnuktani, Wugita Lota, Oneada Aga Nii, Wugwewe Nii, Laguadio ni Yogyaks. I just said in Oneida, greetings, what is the news? Are you with peace? I am with peace. I am Turtle Clan. I am people of the Standing Stone. I am Oneida. My Oneida name means he is a good man. I am thrilled to be putting our minds together with each and every one of you. In Oneida, we have this Thanksgiving address where we have this, this refrain, this repeating phrase where we say, let's put our minds together, so be it in our minds after we give thanks for something. So I'm grateful, giving thanks to the creator that I get to be with all of you, living out my dream job right now and doing this with you all. So welcome to the class. It, this is going to be a 17-week course. We are here in the spring of 2023. I'm going to pull up the syllabus right now just to give a, an idea of where we're going with the class. This is in our asynchronous course. And just a course description here. So a detailed examination of different tribal groups and their worldviews, comparing and contra contrasting of these cultural groups with European American philosophy and each other, giving insight uh, into giving insight to the student into the traditional worldviews, their establishments and ongoing practices in contemporary setting, including the effect effect of their contact with outside cultures and assimilation into larger US culture. So grateful to learn from you all. Definitely it's gonna be heavy reading, heavy watching. You're gonna be getting what you put into it, but I just already seeing that people wanting to learn more about philosophy, wanting to learn more about native peoples. So you're in the right place, people. Welcome to the course, happy to have you here. A number of books that we have right here, let's go through theirs. One of them that is on Kindle, or it's on different options, but How It Is by VF Cordova. That's uh, that's one of the books that we'll be reading as well later in the semester. The first one that we'll be reading right here is A Basic Call to Consciousness, and we'll be examining the different teachings of Chief Orin Lyons, a faith keeper for the Onondaga and a leader for the Haudenosaunee, which comprises the Mohawk, Oneida, Onondaga, Cayuga, Seneca, and Tuscarora. My family, I'm Oneida Nation, being a dual citizen in the United States. I also have English American, German American, and Irish American ancestry, uh, but being a dual citizen of the Haudenosaunee, which is uh, the Six Nations, also known as the French, as the Iroquois. We prefer to call ourselves the Haudenosaunee, means people of the longhouse, people of the longhouse. You can check out this book right here, Basic Call to Consciousness. Another one we'll be looking at this semester is God is Red, looking, looking at the punishing intellectualism of Vine Deloria Jr., as David Wilkins says. So we're going to be examining this book right here. And basically these four different books are broken into the semester, um, kind of each part, each book broken into about four different parts as well. So definitely heavy reading. Last but not least, this put together of these different American Indian thought, these philosophical essays edited by Ann Waters. And some other optional ones that I did not mention, but if you want to look at as well too. Another one, this one's called The Sacred. This is a seminal, really important text that has a lot of references, a lot of important information. Highly recommend this for American Indian philosophy. Not required, but one for extended learning as well, as is Black Elk Speaks, well, one that's often quoted and looked at for American Indian philosophy and different ideas. Um, I remember hearing some uh, claims of like legitimacy of like, where, as another person taking forth what Black Elk was saying. But to my understanding, a lot of people still quote this and look at this as very much a legitimate, valid idea of philosophy. Of a, and you think of the breakdown of the word philosophy, literally meaning philo, the love of uh, and philosophy, uh, wisdom. So it's a love of wisdom. As we look, think about learning and perspectives, uh, one of the questions I ask you all about is like purpose and meaning. But as we just kind of reflect and think about our ways, our values, the way that we make sense of the world and reality, these are some of these ideas that we're tackling throughout the semester as well. So these are just some of the books that we'll have as well too. We're looking at Tom Porter. He has a book uh, and Grandma said, we'll look at him a little bit later on in the semester as well. 
So those are the four required books. Definitely it's going to be heavy reading. So don't fall behind on that. Do check it out. We have our course YouTube playlist as well right here. So you, there, that's going to be a big, a big resource for you all throughout the semester. Some of those different course objectives you can take, a, uh, take some time to look at right here as well too. Definitely encourage you all to be up to date on all the information. So each week when you're watching all the videos, you can do all the readings and then responding with three to seven sentences uh, on the discussion section on Beachboard. And then also you're gonna put one, one response on GroupMe each week as well too, as we'll be doing what's called community peacemaking. This is a, a, an indigenous practice also has been known as talking circles. Some people know it as restorative justice or circle practices, restorative practices. Uh, community peacemaking, it it's, has Haudenosaunee roots, uh, this idea of five once warring nations burying their weapons underneath the great white fir tree of peace and uh, taking up peacemaking, peacekeeping. So uh, this is a, a notion, it's very old, it goes back to 1142, and we know this from a solar eclipse, this is how we know the date, but this is for the Haudenosaunee people, uh, for our practice of coming together uh, and sharing and putting our minds together. So we're putting, putting our minds together in that chat, as we talk about uh, different things of putting our minds together. I was taught talking circles by my grandmother, Eleanor Bailey, an elder in the Oneida Nation. And this, um, she's an elder and she taught me that we'd use an eagle feather. So here's an eagle feather box that my great uncle Leonard made me. And for the eagle feather, it's very sacred. Whoever's holding it, you, can, you cannot tell a lie. So you have to tell the truth whenever you're holding it. Everyone else is as listening as intently as you are when you're speaking. So very sacred, never allowed to touch the ground. Um, yeah, so it has a lot of sacred properties when you're holding it as well too. It's like kind of thinking about that, um, that, that mindset and that perspective of an eagle as well too, as you kind of take that, the bird that flies the highest above the rest, the, the bird that flies above the rain clouds when it rains. So just something for you all to think about. I have the black and yellow here. This is when I graduated from my master's with Cal State Long Beach. My grandma gifted me this. So very special, very sacred to me. Something I want to share with you all. So as we go into that digital Peace, that community peacemaking in our group meet community circle, just to engaging your headspace and your heart space. As I've heard this said from this uh, native practitioner, Don Coyhis, he says that the, the, the space, the 18 inches between your head and your heart, that can be the longest journey that a human being makes in their lifetime as they connect those areas. So as we work to engage, to connect our heads and our hearts, and I'm grateful to have you all here. So um, if you miss more than three of the group me weeks or miss more than three of the discussions, you'll automatically drop one lower grade than where you were at before. Um, if you miss four or more, you would automatically drop the class. You would automatically fail the class, I should say. You need to drop it. Um, I'm not going to automatically drop you. So you need to drop it on your own if you cannot, if you do not want to um, agree to this covenant, to this relationship, this contract. Uh, but if you do want to do it, then I'm looking forward to having you here. But if you miss more than four, then you'd be failing the class. So just know ahead of time that. Those reading structures, uh, you're gonna have a midterm exam, which is gonna be an oral presentation between two and three minutes long, two and three minutes long on up to three concepts you've learned from the class, concepts that stand out to you or resonate with you. You're gonna create a one page infographic or collage or social media post. And it's gonna be, what did you learn about American Indian philosophy? So just kind of a one way, one page snapshot. If you're, if you're a linguist and you like words, you can create a memo and type out, it's like a one page memo if you're an artist, you can draw something, or if you're, uh, you can create some kind of collage or an infographic, which is a combination of words, like just a few bullet point words and some pictures, uh, whatever you can do down the road, as you look back and say, what did I learn during that spring of 2023? What is something that was valuable to me that stood out to me that spoke to my head, to my heart, my spirit? What was something that I, I want to remember? So that's going to be what that is. Your final exam is the same format as the midterm, which is a two to three minute oral presentation. Um, and it's on, th on up to three concepts, but it has to be a different presentation than you gave for the midterm. You can't just give the same presentation twice, but looking forward to that research. It can be something from in the class. It can be something that's related to the class from outside of it. As you being a co-collaborator here in this classroom experience, uh, you have that responsibility and to share with us as well too. I would say have that critical lens as truth has no fear from investigation. Don't be afraid to ask questions as you're looking at different things we look to what's uh, validity, you look for sometimes what's called triangulation of data, where do things line up? Does it say something elsewhere? And sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it goes against what's been uh, maybe documented or different things. And that's not a bad thing necessarily either. It's just pointing, pointing those things out in your research. But that being said, you can take in outside research. You can take in resources from the class and talk about those. Lastly is a final reflection paper. That's one to two pages due on that final exam day before 11.59 p.m. 
just a reflection right here. It's a lot of it's that's participatory. It's you engaging in this process and wh what have you learned throughout this process as well too. So your participation is gonna be a big part of that of 20%. Each of these breakdowns at 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20 5 20s <laughs> to come to 100. Some different resources you have there as well too. You can look through the syllabus for um, support for immigrant students with disabilities, um, for Title IX um, resources as well too. We have a lot of different resources for you. If you need it, do reach out, reach out to me. I'm on your team. I wanna see you succeed. So here's just a breakdown of our overview for our roadmap of where we're going for the semester. We're just talking about Orin lines a little bit this week uh, and also that basic call to consciousness of what you're about to be reading. So do check out that. You'll see the book broken down to that first kind of quarter of it so far. Your action items, what you need to do by the end of this week is to uh, respond and to introduce yourself in the discussion section, the discussions on Beachboard, and then also one to three sentence of that community peacemaking response in the group me. So do be sure to respond with that. I know some people already have as well too. So you can just see a roadmap of where the semester goes. We, we do about uh, four classes about on Orin Lions and the basic call to consciousness. You can see the reading breakdown as well. The videos, you go to discussion on Beachboard and they'll show you the breakdown of what videos you are supposed to watch each week. Then from about week five to about uh, six, seven, we're uh, five and six, we're looking at Vine Deloria Jr., this academic in his book, God is Red. And then we're gonna be looking at some other leaders as well too, some thought leaders, Vine Deloria Jr., Cindy Alvitri for the, the Tongva, Gabrielino Tongva, and we're still looking at God is Red. We're gonna look at Win Winona LaDuke, this activist, thought leader, thinker. It's one of the things when we think about philosophy, these deep thinkers, the people who have produced different thoughts um, and leaders of thoughts. Winona LaDuke, I've had the chance of meeting them in person. Phenomenal, fierce, strong human being, has um, a lot of great insights. So we'll watch some videos uh, learning from uh, Winona LaDuke. And then also we'll be looking at the book, How It Is, and that is that VF Cordova book as well too. And then we will then be going on to, you'll look at the spring break there. I'm picking up lastly with John Trudell in that book, American Indian Thought, those essays put together by Ann Waters. So then you'll come near the semester, near the end, you'll turn in that infographic or social media post or collage. And then that final exam and final reflection paper due on May 8th. So that's gonna be where our semester is looking like right now, people. If you have any questions, do let me know. I'm on your team, I'm on your side. Here's a quick look at the YouTube playlist. You can take a check out here and, and see some of the videos that we have on there. Uh, generally speaking, going through chronological order, sometimes there'll be extra resources on there. We don't get a chance to, to check out. So do check it out on your own if you're interested as well. A great place for resources. And just lastly, a little introduction about me. Well, before we do that, we'll look at the we'll look at beach board here. So we have our beach board, AIS 33035. You see our group meet class link. Be sure to check that out and click on that to join the group. I know most of you have already. Introduction, office hours are on th Thursdays from 12.30 p.m. to 1.30 p.m. right by this link right here or by appointment. If you can't make it then, do let me know and I, I wanna I, I try to respond back as soon as I can. Try to give me about 48 to 72 hours of response, but I generally will get you back to you before then. Here's the course uh, breakdown for all those different video recordings. You can see it's give or take about uh, two and a half or so hours for each of those little windows of viewing. So it is a 335 class, which is heavy on the reading, heavy on the viewings. But I know you can do it, people. You're a human being who is worthy of love. I believe, as a Georgiana Sanchez, the uh, Shumash woman, an el a traditional um, elder from, uh, close to the lands where we're at here in Southern California. And I remember the first day of class for American Indian literature. She said, do you ever wonder if you're, if you're who you're supposed to be? She says, of course you are because you, you're you. And, and she said, do you ever feel like, am I, where I'm, am I where I'm supposed to be at? She says, of course you are because you're here. So that being said, of course you are. Thanks for being you. And of course, thanks for being here. Grateful to have you here. Uh, in the words of Jay-Z, you could be anywhere in the world, but you're here with me, and I thank you for that. So grateful for each and every one of you people. Looking forward to learning alongside each and every one of you. So that is it. Make sure to get in the introductions here. And then from there, um, no need for a week one response. If you want to, you can. But uh, starting week two, you'll start to start have to doing those responses from the readings and the videos. But do watch those week one videos as well. And then lastly, for a week one overview, just so you all can get to know about Little old me, the person who's teaching y'all some stuff, hopefully, as we're going through this semester. 
So I told you the introduction about myself and a, a little bit of that traditional language written here and the Oneida language. You can see it's pronounced much differently than it's spelt as well too. And that's just our different language bases. Of, uh, there's over 574 federally recognized tribes, another couple, another few hundred state recognized, another few hundred who are not recognized at all. Uh, each of these will have their own unique culture, languages. Some some will have similar language, uh, similar language bases, but many will be very unique and different. I've heard as different as English is to Mandarin are some languages. So uh, when I'm talking about American Indian philosophy, about Native philosophy and thought, I'm I'm not speaking on as a monolith. I'm not speaking on behalf of all Native peoples. I'm speaking with my own lived experience of what I've learned as well too, um, as a scholar and as a human being uh, who is worthy of love, like yourself, who's on a journey of discovery of truth, light, and love. So that being said, you can see regalia. This is a traditional clothing that we'll wear for uh, as uh, as Oneida people for my tribe specifically. And it has like meaning and purpose, everything I'm wearing. So for instance, me in the middle, my moccasins are uh, have turtles on them for my turtle clan. You have the turtles on my apron here. This belt is representing the Haudenosaunee, the Mohawk, Oneida, Onondaga, Cayuga, Seneca, and Tuscarora. This very sacred eagle feather fan I have here as well as some turtles on my shirt and my gustoi, which is my headpiece. And for the Oneida, we're two eagle feathers up and one eagle feather down. And that's how we do our identity. And how that will have purpose and meaning as well too. And my grandma is there with the red shawl, Eleanor Bailey. And on the right was my cousin, um, Norma Jean Primado. Norma Jean Primo, um, Primo, sorry. <laughs> um, so part of my identity here, I told you a little bit about myself. Uh, my wife right here, she's super sweet, a phenomenal human being who's worthy of love as well, too. We have our two dogs here, Sydney Momo Reed and Millie Zero Reed. They're both very sweet and cute. Maybe you caught the references of Avatar The Last Airbender in Nightmare Before Christmas, but good stuff there. A little bit about my education. Grew up in Southern California, went to Pepperdine for my undergraduate, where I studied rhetoric and leadership for communication. Did a program at George Washington University about Native American political leadership. I studied a master in public administration and a certificate in American Indian studies from Cal State Long Beach, which we also call Cal State Pavunga, which is a Gabrieleño Tongva word for the great gathering place, which this is whose lands we are on here is the Gabrieleño Tongva, as well as the Wanyanyo Achimen, right next to sh the Shumash territory and many other territories of traditional native peoples here in Southern California. I got my PhD from the University of San Diego in leadership and organizational consulting. I did my dissertation all about Oneida, college lacrosse players and our perspectives of the sacred game of lacrosse. As for our Oneida people, for our creation story, there's a game of lacrosse being played right from the get-go. So I, I worked with 12 other Oneida college lacrosse players and we used community peacemaking. We used talking circles to, to talk about how are we gonna hold on to these traditional values? How do we share these values? And one of the big takeaways was we preserve it by talking and educating others about it as well too, like I'm doing with you all right now. So thanks for listening. And recently I had the chance to attend uh, Nation Building One, or as Chief Oren Lyons refers to it as Nation Rebuilding, which I love that mindset at Harvard Kennedy School. So it was a good experience as well too. And a little bit about my ex experience. I was a neighborhood city councilman and director of Area E at Delray, California from 2013 to 2015, where I served on the Land Use and Planning Committee. I interned at the National Congress of American Indians in 2014 in external communication. I tried out for the Haudenosaunee National Indoor Team in 2015, which is a professional Native American, professional indigenous team that competes internationally. They're ranked number two in the world for indoor lacrosse, the team I tried out for. And while I did not make the team, I was grateful and proud to have been using a wooden lacrosse stick, the same one I'm using here in that photo. Uh, that's me in the bottom left. So I love, love the game. And also I ran for mayor of Rancho Cucamonga in 2018. While I did not win, I still, um, still not done yet. Still plan on running for more public service in the future trying to bring people together and um, just help try to make our world the best place it can possibly be. Right now, I'm currently a tenure track professor at, at in American Indian Studies at Cal State Pavonga. I am a trainer at the National Center on Restorative Justice at University of San Diego. I teach restorative justice in indigenous communities of Vermont Law School as an adjunct faculty. I am a restorative justice practitioner, a community peacemaking practitioner as well, where I'll go across Turtle Island, which is another word, a native word for either North America, sometimes referred to as North and South America, but primarily I'll go around North America and Turtle Island and um, teach people about community peacemaking or do it as an alternative to mediation or as an alternative to the criminal justice system. 
I'm also a program manager for the Haudenosaunee Nationals development teams for lacrosse. And um, I have in the past taught a sports and leadership class at University of San Diego. So in my dreams here, I would really love to help free Leonard Peltier from prison, who is a political prisoner since 1977, known to be, if not the longest running American United States political pl prisoner. Uh, he is in prison for a crime which he did not commit, or which he continues to attest that he did not commit, and evidence has proven that he did not commit it, but yet he is still in jail for that crime. So I'd love for um, President Biden or any president uh, to be able to free Leonard Peltier, hopefully sooner than later. Um, so definitely asking for clemency, so that'd be a big dream I have. I would love to eventually become mayor, congressperson, senator, eventually president of the United States in hopes to enact legislative change for the greatest good for the greatest amount of people and really to help heal our world for seven generations to come. And Chief Orrin Lyon says, don't make decisions just for you, don't make decisions just for your family or don't even make them just for this generation. Make your decisions for seven generations from now. And John Trudell has this idea of DNA, descendants now ancestors, of what will people that that we are um, that we as descendants of the different people, what will people say about us someday when we're ancestors, when they look back on us, our descendants of, of us seeing us as ancestors of what did we do? How did we hold up our our culture? How do we make our world a better place? How do we help bring people together? Um, how did we help share light and love? So a little bit about being for fun. I like to have fun as well, believe it or not. Uh, I definitely enjoy video games. I consider them some good biofeedback therapy for just uh, for, uh, chronic illness. I have a fibromyalgia, so it definitely is nice. Uh, just release and a lot, a lot of fun. I definitely enjoy reading graphic novels, a number of graphic novels I like to read. I'm working right now on a, pro uh, a project about native representation in graphic novels. I love board sports like skateboarding, snowboarding, surfing. I'm about to go up to Mammoth here soon to go snowboarding. I love playing lacrosse with a traditional hickory stick. There's my wooden lacrosse stick collection there. I love language. I love culture, even learning about more about different of uh, my own ethnicities, languages, but also I love learning other people's languages and cultures and just uh, engaging that mutual reciprocity of sharing and learning how little I know every day. I love movies, TV, music. One of my favorite movies is the Arri is Arrival. This is right here. It's kind of people putting their minds together. I love that. Love different TV shows. Avatar The Last Airbender still speaks to my soul at times. And I love music. Big fan of Drake, but also love just uh, a number of different genres of music. Uh, I like all music. Love to play the drums, both the modern drums and also a traditional hand drum as well too, which is like for a, a native singing and drumming. And I also love to meditate and do yoga. So there's no, Chief Orient Lions has talked a lot about the overlap of kind of like uh, meditation, uh, Buddhist practices and the idea of just being very present and being sensing a relation to all living things and uh, to a creator and uh, a pure like light and um, a source of love. Like that, these are very much overlapping ideas uh, between like different Buddhist and uh, Hindu ideas that, that are very much aligned with uh, Haudenosaunee uh, and many other different tribal nations ideas for, for just that meditative idea of being present with nature, being present with all people. You'll hear this Lakota idea of all my relatives. I know in, in Oneida, we have this this phrase called we are all family. So I, I, um, I very much see that as we are all family. And so I, I like to meditate in the morning and at nighttime, I like to open open my chakras as I, as I wake up and as I, as I go to bed at night. So uh, grateful for each and every one of you. The light in me recognizes the light in you. The love in me recognizes the light in you. The highest in me recognizes the highest in you. And Katalunkwa um, means I love you in Oneida. So people, now it's your turn. I want you to hop in if you haven't already on the discussions on our beach board to introduce yourself, your preferred name. If you have a major or career path that you're going towards, something we should know about you. It could be anything at all and what you hope to get out of this class, if anything. Maybe you, uh, you don't know yet. And that's all right. The old sacred shrug. I don't know. One of my friends is a, um, practices Buddhism. It tells me a lot about that. The sacred shrug. You say, you know what? I don't know, but I'm, I'm willing to find out. Let's, let's, let's find out and see what happens. So with that being said, you, yes, you are a human being who is worthy of love. I've been Dr. Reed. You've been amazing. Sit up nice and tall. Give me the deepest breath of love you've had all day. Breathing like you love yourself. Breathing in some love. Exhaling some love. In addition to our written assignments, your assignment is to breathe like you love yourself, move like you love yourself, and think like you love yourself because you are love and you are worthy of love. With that, I say, Yawonko Ganalunkwa Nugiwa means thank you, I love you. Until next time in Oneida. Take care, everybody. See you in the group me and see you in the beach board.